Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today I have a very special guest, David Davidson from Revocation. How are you, good sir? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It is a cold, gloomy, rainy day here in Toronto, but that is A-OK because that gives me an excuse to sit inside and do a whole lot of nothing, which I think we all need every now and then. Sometimes you just got to chill. Absolutely. I just open up. I, I had the questions open and now they're gone because I'm a very professional person. <laughs> Here we go. Off to a great start. Absolutely. Nothing but the most, the most, uh, the best timing, the utmost professionalism here on the Metal Meltdown. All right. God damn it. Fucking shit. You can My swear stupid on the show. Fuck... <laughs> what was that? You can swear on the show. Oh, no. I can swear. as You can swear as much as you like as well. Go for it. Okay. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. New album, Nether Heaven, coming out in uh, September. A press release states that Nether Heaven bores deftly through the nine rings of hell directly to confront Lucifer and that Dante's The Divine Comedy was a huge influence on the album. With nine tracks, is it safe to suggest that the further you get into the album, the further you dive through the nine rings of hell? Um, yeah, I would, I would say so. It gets, it gets pretty, well, it's kind of demonic on every song, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. the album itself wasn't necessarily inspired by Dante's Inferno. Um, the last track, Recrucified, was, um, in general, I just kind of drew inspiration from just like hellish themes, the occult, even, you know, sort of current events. Um, but I kind of, oh, yeah, I filtered it through uh, an infernal lens, shall we say. Uh, another book called America the Fell Where the Farewell Tour was also cited in that same press release as an influence. Mm -hmm. um, how much of that book plays into the record and how much of like modern events and politics plays into the record? Um, well, that it's an incredible book. Uh, Chris Hedges. Uh, the song Nihilistic Violence was definitely uh, inspired by that book, as well as the events of January 6th and uh, and just sort of the the situation that led up to that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I you know, I, I kind of drew, like like I said, sort of inspiration from a variety of, of sources. Um, so that book, maybe kind of in general, there were certain things that I pulled that were in the back of my mind, maybe when I was just sort of thinking about writing lyrics in general, but uh, Nihilistic Violence, that song specifically, uh, was inspired by that book. Are you and, at all like worried said, of... The, the events of January 6th. Mm -hmm. Are you at all worried about uh, upsetting maybe some metalheads who aren't really keen on having politics represented in metal? Because I have found myself just here on this channel, like I'll reference something political that's actually talked about on an album, and then someone will go, oh, why are you bringing up politics? And I'm like, no, they they brought up politics... So are you all at all worried about uh, maybe offending or upsetting certain people? Um, no, I mean, I think, you know, metal is like meant to sort of poke and prod at, at different mm -hmm. things. And uh, it's certainly, you know, meant to be an offensive genre. I mean, even going back to like, you know, like, you know, Black Sabbath, I'm sure like just their name was offensive to people, uh, you know, their 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 imagery of the, of the occult and um you know, like, I think, you know, probably a lot of people thought they were, like, satanic and shit like that. And I'm sure there were religious groups that were offended by their presence. I mean, certainly, like, I mean, yeah, like, Ozzy Osbourne is, like, he's kind of been embraced as, like, Walking a, controversy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, now, uh, I mean, he's he's been embraced, uh, obviously, by, like, I mean, he's, like, a, he's, like, a major, like, celebrity. Um, but, like, I mean, back then, yeah, he was, he was certainly, like, considered uh you know super controversial was like in the news um so yeah I, I, it's, it's funny to me when people like metalheads maybe get like offended by certain things or say like oh you shouldn't talk about politics or this or that like you know like i think music in general all art um can be like inherently political um there's a great jazz guitar player named near felder who once said you know all music is is political you know we live in a world where uh in some places people can't freely express themselves due to you know certain regimes that are in power mm -hmm. um so the freedom just to like perform music or to you know write about certain topics 
um, you know, is, is a byproduct of a political system that we live in. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, you know, as an artist, I try to like confront certain topics, things that are, um, important to me or things that I feel like compelled to write about. Um, like, I don't want to like self censor myself because of what somebody else is going to think. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, like I said, I mean, going all the way back to black Sabbath, like metal has been a very controversial genre. So, uh, yeah, black yeah. Sabbath is also like looking back at some of those early songs, like a lot more political than people want to give them credit for. Oh yeah. War like, pigs, you know, I mean, it's funny. Children too, of like, the grave is literally about like the byproducts of nuclear war. Like, right. What's right. going to happen when we devastate the earth with atom bombs? Like who's right. going to be left? Right. Right. Yeah. Thank God for the bomb. Um, you know, so, so many, so many songs that were, uh, you know, politically charged even his, in his solo career. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, people just need to either listen to it or or like or, or don't. I don't know. Need to pay closer attention. I, I have well, it's funny here. when people get upset about like even like Rage Against the Machine. You know what I mean? Like people are like that were oh, like that became one fans is so later funny on. They're like, oh wow, they're they're political. It's like the core of that band has always been super political. So their name is Rage Against the Machine. Did right, you think right. they were raging against like an actual machine, like a right. Terminator? Like that's the only <laughs> What what did you think they were talking about this whole time? Exactly. It's like like they'll they'll just listen to like killing in the name and like uh, bowls on parade and be like, oh, that's about that's about something else. I'm not. That's not me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking I, funny. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I have to just write about what I what I'm compelled to write about. Otherwise, I feel like I'm being like disingenuous. You know. Mm -hmm. Were there any other uh, books or uh, that may have inspired the record? Uh, or that yeah, you would maybe so, recommend to uh, people to check looking forward to Nether Heaven? Sure. Uh, I mean, one song, Strange and Eternal, that kind of, it doesn't fit quite exactly with the hell theme, although in my mind I can kind of draw maybe some similarities uh, that, that, that make the concept fit for, for myself. Uh, but Strange and Eternal was inspired by the works of um, Robert Chambers. Uh, he wrote a, uh, uh, a book. Well, it's actually a collection of short stories called uh, The mm -hmm. King in Yellow. If you're a fan of True Detective, uh, the first season of True Detective, they referenced the Yellow King. Um, that was uh, di directly inspired by Robert Chambers' uh, work. Um, it's actually kind of fascinating when you think about it in, in context of True Detective. I was a huge fan of the first season, um, so it kind of led me down that rabbit hole. And I discovered Chambers' works and, and, and read his uh, short stories because of that um, show. Uh, but basically, uh, within the short stories the, the 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 king in yellow is is referenced it's it's a play you never actually read the play the king in yellow it's just referenced throughout these different short stories okay um, and essentially it's a play in two parts the first um half of the play is relatively benign um you know kind of like draws you in but there's nothing um you know th th there's nothing about it that uh is particularly of note um, and then if you read the second half of the play, you actually go insane. Um, so like, I think the, the, the show true detective, it's kind of like a, a show in like two parts where like the first kind of half of the show, like the main character rust is like, you know, following this yellow King and sort of by the, the, the second half of it, like, you know, it's kind of fully consumed him. And like, he's sort of lost his mind because of that, you know, and in the pursuit of this, uh, you know, trying to capture the, uh, um, the villain there. Um, I look at it like, you know, with, with certain, uh, you know, possibly like religious texts, right. You know, the more you kind of read it with, the, uh, you know, taking things literally and the more sort of fanatical you become, um, you know, obviously like the more it sort of affects like your personality and, um, you know, I th and I think is, you know, kind of detrimental to society, the more literal we take, um, religious texts. So I guess it would, in, in a way it kind of connected to the religious theme on nether heaven, um, in terms of like, maybe like religious, like fanaticism, um, mm -hmm. little, little bit of like a stretch, but again, I think, you know, for me coming up with the concepts, I can kind of draw influence from different things. And like, I, and if I, if I feel like it fits with the vibe of the record, you know, I don't want to like hold myself back when I'm writing because it's like, oh, it doesn't, this one song doesn't fit exactly with this theme. Like I'll come up with a general concept for an album and then, you know, if, if a song here or there isn't exactly in line with it, um, 
I'll, I'll sort of figure out a way in my own mind to kind of like make it work and make it kind of fit with the theme of the, mm. of the album. Almost like you're uh, almost like there's a puzzle and you got this piece that doesn't quite fit, but it still kind of does. So you're just going to throw yeah, it in. And, anyway. and again, I don't want to limit myself. Like, you know, if, if, if it's a cool idea that, you know, in, in my opinion, um, or, you know, and, it, and, the, and if the music fits the vibe, um, you know, not every single song has to have like a, a hell theme either. Like you can have a general, concept record and then yeah have have certain pieces that maybe don't exactly fit and and maybe that brings a you know a, a different kind of element to the record that might be needed as well you know like a, a little bit of like a, a detour for the from the from the theme that um you know makes the next song you know hit that mm -hmm. much harder or something in terms of yeah like it can make it, it back like a the theme. make it more impactful like it's like all right we got this brief little deviation you know we're we're taking the long way around and then boom back to hell exactly uh would you say with this in mind that nether heaven is lyrically and conceptually revocation's most ambitious or most diverse record um i mean you know obviously like we're biased when it comes to like our music like i think everything that we put out like the next newest thing is you know the most ambitious we really try to push ourselves as a band for sure mm -hmm. so um yeah, I, I would say it's probably our most ambitious yet. I mean, you know, uh, like the concept of, of religion and, and hell. I mean, these are topics that um, obviously have been discussed before in, in, uh, in the metal genre, uh, but they are pretty grandiose uh, topics, right? Um, so, like, I think trying to tackle that and do it in our own way and, and have it be unique and, and not just sort of you know, use like Christianity just like as like an easy punching bag, but actually kind of, you know, discuss these themes and topics and in, in ways that um, have have like a unique sort of slant on them is, is obviously like a challenge because certainly, you know, the concepts of heaven and hell have been fodder for metal lyrics for a very long time. So mm -hmm. that was a fun challenge. I think musically, it's it's incredibly ambitious. Um, I think we've really honed our sound over the years. We've done a lot of experimentation with our music throughout the course of our career. Um, and I think we've really kind of honed it uh, to, I don't know, a level where like, it just feels very cohesive to me now. It feels like we're still pushing our boundaries, but we're doing it in a way that's just like razor sharp and, and, and pinpointed and focused. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when you combined all of those elements, I mean, even even with the artwork, you know, not just of the album, but, you know, of like individual like merch designs that were kind of like bringing it all together. So, yeah, I, th I think it was definitely like an ambitious undertaking. But, you know, we had like a good amount of time off with the pandemic to like sort of plan these things out. And I know for me in my head, like, you know, when I started writing the riffs and started coming up with like general concepts, I just kind of kept building on it in my mind. You know, it's kind of like world building, right? Like you're trying to tell a story um, and then like, through that story with 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 the music with the lyrics with the artwork you just kind of keep intensifying it more and more um and yeah i'm incredibly proud of what we've come up with hell yeah I, i've heard a, a good chunk of the record myself i love it frankly i'm a longtime revocation fan i i uh i came to know you guys through the self-titled record back in 2013 and it i remember too because i saw you guys at the opera house I think it was with Devil Driver and there was, I think Carnifex was on the bill as well. Mm -hmm. I remember you guys played Invidious and you actually brought a guy out to play a uh, banjo uh, for uh, the little banjo ditty. And that, yeah. that always like, that blew my mind as like a 19 year old metalhead. It's like, what? Banjos in metal? That's crazy. Yeah, I, I bought that and then I immediately returned it. People were like, oh, you play banjo? I'm like, no, I don't. I tuned it <laughs> like a guitar and I just wanted the tone of it and, and Brought it back to Guitar Center like the next day, um, but yeah, people still talk about the banjo part. So. It's it's so good too. Like it's it that's still one maybe one of my favorite songs in Vidius after all these years. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a fun thrashy one. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think that chicken picking thing going on. Like I I wanted to make like a a ripping thrash tune that had like yeah like like a like a yeah, almost like like D beats, like kind of like inspired by like some of the like the jangly stuff like Converge does sometimes, where they'll do those like they almost sound like rock licks, but it's like through, you know through like a like a D beat like hardcore yeah. kind of vibe. So like um, I love I love that with Converge, where they'll just yeah. play like some gnarly metalcore hardcore shit, but there's like a riff where it's just like oh this is straight up hard rock. 
right right like just, exactly so i think i was kind of inspired by inspired by that but yeah it's that's you know definitely i think like a fan favorite we should bring that one back into the set at some point oh absolutely please do oh i mean uh y'all y'all are about to go on tour with christian and alluvial mm-hmm. and yep, I, I i promise you you play that and i'll be raging in the pit i'll okay, be going nuts right. yeah, we'll see <laughs> um speaking of uh Christian Alluvial tour. How uh this is uh probably your first headlining tour in a while, I imagine. Are you pumped? Oh yeah, I'm super excited. Um yeah, it's been a minute since we've headlined. Um we did a co-headliner with Voivod uh several years back and then you know, obviously pandemic hit and all that shit. But um yeah, I can't wait to get back on the road. I mean, we did a tour with Cannibal where we were supporting them, obviously. Um, and that was just amazing. I mean, the shows were incredible. There was such a uh just a hunger from the fans. I think people just like wanted to be like in the pit at the live show, just like going fucking berserk. So I hope, uh, you know, that energy is still carrying over. It seems like there's a, like a great amount of buzz around the record right now. And I think people are um, hopefully excited to see some of these new songs live. And yeah, like, I mean, Christian, they just put out a killer record. Um, they're an awesome live band. Like they fucking always deliver just mm-hmm. like fucking death metal brutality um, an alluvial incredible band super technical their record came out like not too long ago so it's still relatively fresh um and inoculation the opening band is is, is killer as well they're on um i think they're on maggot stomp records and um just like super technical weird spacey death metal that i think fits the overall package really well so yeah i can't i can't wait to hit the road with those guys all, all great bands for sure i i remember seeing chrissy in i think a few years back with cattle decapitation and suffocation at like a really like shitty dive bar here in Toronto, and they just mm-hmm. tore the place up. Yeah. I think it was at, uh, I think it was Lee's Palace. That's actually where you guys are coming to play in in Toronto. Yep. Hell yeah! yeah. It should be fun. Um, one of the tracks from the uh, new album, Recrucified, it features uh, Corpse Grinder and Trevor, uh, from the Black Dahlia Murder on guest vocals. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how how did that come together? There aren't a lot of guest spots on the record, so I'm, I'm curious how this one in particular came together. Yeah, I think with Recrucify, you know, being inspired by Dante's Inferno, um, that book, you know, has has a, you know, I mean, obviously he's like descending through the different circles of hell. And, um, you know, there's there's like these kind of like different characters and like different sort of narration throughout that, that story. Uh, so I wanted to kind of bring that like narrative quality to to the song and like even when i was writing the lyrics i was i was envisioning like sort of different characters you know within these circles of hell sort of coming out uh and like you know kind of helping to to guide us through the the inferno so uh you know trevor um great friend of mine you know he's sorely missed um we, we 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 hung out like a bunch like you know on and off tour um you know he was one of my my homies i just like call up and we just like go and like grab some beers and just like shoot the shit and um so like i just just texted him like hey man you want to guest on this song and he was like oh totally like you know was into it like immediately uh and and george has become a really uh close friend of the band over the years as well i mean we've done several tours with with cannibal and um, you know, we shared a bus with them in Europe uh, for like seven weeks or something crazy. So, you know, you form definitely like a strong bond when you when you tour. Um, yeah, that's a long time to be in a a, a bus with a bunch of guys. Yeah, you got to yeah. come out friends. <laughs> right, right. And hopefully. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we hit him up and and uh, he was, you know, he was available as well. And, you know, both those guys just delivered like powerhouse performances on it. Um, you know, like Trevor's vocals have like this like. Like almost like theatrical quality to them you know like he really kind of like i think embodied that kind of like demonic you know character or whatever mm-hmm. like you know for that part of the song and then um you know george uh literally is like the the lyrics at that point are like the personification of of satan himself and i think you know his just like bellowing death metal just growl is so is so thunderous on that part especially like the riff that he's singing over is very kind of open and it just allows his his voice to really shine through so both of their performances um are, are real highlights of the record for me and i think it was cool too and something kind of special because normally when you have a guest it's it's not like you, you might have like you know a guest on a record and it's just like one person so having both of those like 
you know, truly iconic vocalist on one track um, was extra special. Having them kind of play off each other too is, mm -hmm. is really great. Cause like Trevor had this really like dynamic over the top, as you put it, theatrical kind of voice, like a lot of highs and a lot of lows. And like, then there's kind of corpse grinder who just has that really menacing, iconic roar. Like it's, it, it's just great. It really does sound like a, uh, satan speaking to his underlings or, or like right. maybe his uh just bullying some little goblin demon creature around like get back to work or whatever it, it's right. so cool right thank you yeah if i'm not mistaken too and and who knows maybe black dahlia murder cooked something up before trevor passed but if i'm not mistaken that's one of trevor's uh final recorded songs and in turn never heaven was dedicated to uh trevor how does that make you feel um I mean, you know, it's 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 you know still heartbroken over his loss, obviously, but I'm 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 proud that we could be part of his legacy in some, you know, in some small way. I mean, you know, his he's his work with Black Dahlia Murder is incredible. Um, yeah, I'm 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 happy that we can keep his you know his mm -hmm. memory alive and going, and and yeah, be be you know be be a part of his you know incredible legacy because um, you know obviously he'll he'll live th forever through his his music. So um, I'm glad that we could we could share in that um, you know creating art together. Mm -hmm. hey, the music will definitely live on for years. I mean, I feel like the Black Dahlia Murder is like this generation's answer to a band like Morbid Angel or Cannibal Corpse. Mm. Like a lot of teenagers and young adults right now are being introduced to death metal through that band. I mean, my, I, myself, the first death metal album I probably bought was ever black, like back in 2012, 13, whenever it came out. Mm -hmm. And I've been a, a fan since. So they'll, their, their music definitely isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question for you, then I'll let you go. I'll end on a slightly more uh, silly fun note. Uh, you guys have uh, released hot sauces online, mm. and I noticed on on Instagram you also have a signature revocation beer. Uh, this is in Brooklyn, yes. Uh, yeah, that's in the works right now. Yep. I'd love to know what are some other like crazy things you'd love to slap the revocation name on. Like, can we expect a revocation tomato sauce in the future? Oh, a man. revocation pesto. A revocation pesto Re signature revocation cider <laughs> oh, yeah i mean uh let's see what we could do you know maybe like uh you know i mean we, you could kind of put that logo on anything you know you know you could do like a revocation uh uh you know bug zapper or something um <laughs> bloodbath has a mouse trap they have their own they signature really? mouse trap that they're selling with box sets of the new album so there's there's precedent for a bug zapper <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like end of the summer, you get fruit flies, just get the revocation brand, you know, just, uh, you know, maybe it's like kind of, you know, we, instead of like electricity, we use like, like a, like a flamethrower or something <laughs> like that, like just really over the top. I, I like to imagine it would be shaped like some kind of uh, otherworldly weapon. Like, right, it, right. it would or just like not just look like, like a, something from here. Like a mouth of hell or something like that. that yes, just kind of like, like it's something up. ripped out of Doom Eternal or something. Right. <laughs> now, it might set your entire apartment on fire, but, you know, you got to read the fine print with the revocation bug zapper. It's a bit overkill, so just don't leave it near any curtains or anything like that. On the bright side, that means those bugs are definitely totally zapped. Oh, yeah. We're sending them straight to hell for sure. <laughs> Barbecued. Well done. <laughs> Not a, not a trace. David, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Anything else you want to say to the fine people watching the Metal Meltdown from home? Uh, thank you so much for the interview. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, pick up the new record, uh, Nether Heaven, September 9th, and come see us on tour. We're doing a full North American run um, starting the day the record comes out. So we're in your city. Come hang out. We're looking. I think Toronto is the very first show. So can't It is, and I'm, I'm trying to squirm out of work to be there. You better be there, man. <laughs> Are, it's tough. Force... I'm a I'm a chef over at the Brickwork Cider House on Queen and Broadview, so I can't just <laughs> I can't just dip. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my I'm best. Gotta dip. Otherwise, I'm gonna show up with the with the Revo Bug Zapper, and we're gonna you know. <laughs> Honestly, that's a solid compromise because that'll look awesome. I'll, I'll have a bunch of people just like who who the fuck are these assholes? And I'm like, oh, I know them. They're sit them at table ten. They're good. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. You're very welcome.
Ladies and gentlemen, David Davidson, make sure you buy the album. As you said, check out Revocation and all their other albums if you have not somehow done so already. Press this button to subscribe and have yourself a fantastic fucking day.